Well, good morning. You're still watching Morning at NTV. That's our hashtag, Morning at NTV. We're on Twitter and on Facebook. And of course, you are on YouTube as well. If you are catching us on live stream, thank you for joining us. Um, so in the studios, I'll start on, uh, well, we, we are distancing. Um, it, it might look closer on TV, but I promise you we are. And uh, I'm going to be like the president say, because me, I am safe and they're safe. I don't have a mask on, but they're safe. I have Alana Kembawazi. Uh, you and I had a small bit of a conversation earlier on yeah. this week on this yeah. particular topic we're going to discuss. You're the program manager at AISA. AISA being? The Initiative for Social and Economic Rights. Okay. I've uh, looked at you, her CV very long, and so this should be an interesting <laughs> conversation. I hope you're ready. Emmanuel <laughs> Neviona, who's the wow. PRO at uh, Ministry of Health. And uh, during the week, we're talking about affordability, uh, you know, for you know, the healthcare sector because of different things. First of all, welcome. Thank you. I have to be polite. <laughs> I forgot you. that part. Good morning and welcome. I also S welcome you back. Y yes. You've been away for some time. And congratulations. Thank you, yeah. thank you. And I dealt with the healthcare system, so this should be a good <laughs> conversation with facts today. Yes. Um, I don't know if we should start with what we've been talking about this whole morning. Mm -hmm. I know you said the minister was um, teaching people, demonstrating the use of masks, the yes. correct use of masks. Yes. Is, there that, is that evidence out? Do we have a video of her actually teaching them how to use the mask? Yeah, you know, my background is journalism. Mm. And I always uh, refrain from commenting about a matter of which I don't have facts. Obviously. Having not been in Lira mm. on mm. that day. Mm. So I'm waiting for the minister mm -hmm. to come and explain to, uh, like, uh, the, the real circumstances of, of that day. before... Mm. I make any comment on the matter. Yes. yes. And uh, you know, there's also a court of public opinion as a journalist. You know, yes. that exists and has already. Yeah, but everyone is entitled to their opinion. Mm. But as a trained journalist, mm. I stick to the facts based on, on what I've seen, what I've sensed, and heard. Spoken like a true journalist <laughs> dodging a question. <laughs> but, but anyway, st so during the week, there were those stories. It's not the first time we've seen stories like, you know, I'm a patient, I've gone to hospital. For some reason, mm. even if I came in with my little money, I can't afford the rest of the bill. Something has yeah. happened. And then the hospital says, stay until you can pay your bill. And people were saying, is this legal? And I think it's the first question I asked your landlord and said, Let's just start with just that question, whether it is legal, because I know Emma can speak for the government hospitals, but then there's also private hospitals that are telling you it's business. Mm. This is mm. how we're making money. And you said, and I'll, I'll quote you on this, healthcare should not be business. You should not say it's business because it can't be business when we're treating people. Right. Uh, isn't it unfair for the private hospitals if we say it can't be business? I, I think, first of all, it's illegal, private or public, for you to hold someone because they're unable to pay. There are, uh, right from our constitution, it's very clear, you can only hold someone in a gazetted place of detention. So from a legal perspective, completely legal on both ends. Um, in terms of my earlier statement, I, I, I still, I very much stand by it because, um, like I said, healthcare and education are also public goods. At the very heart of them, they are public goods. Yes. Now we are seeing, and in Uganda's context, uh, for so long it was actually really the public. We see the private begin to come in, and it is supposed to complement the public sector. Mm -hmm. um, but they must remember at the heart of it that you are delivering on a public good, yes. and uh, uh, and there is a reason from that. And there are certain benefits they do get from the fact that they're delivering from a public good. And so it's not you're not going to compare it to selling shoes. For example, it is just completely Any different. Any other business, right? Yeah. yeah, and I do say I, I I do think that there are ways for the you know th there are ways in which you recover debt in this country that require you to go through court processes that require you to you know fa follow certain processes that can be done. But when you decide, there are certain things that are, that should be clear. Access to emergency care is supposed is, it's, it's it's emergency care. It is a right. It is supposed to be free. At that moment, like you're supposed to be able to give it it's to someone, emergency. right? Like it's an emergency. Mm, yes. They didn't plan for it. Let's look at these cases and let's look at because I like to talk with facts. In that particular case of Nsambia, the lady had a C section complication that resulted in her, in her having to go there. And suddenly the bill is crazy. The mother sold off livestock there at the end. The baby has died. 
and the woman is still being held. She can't even go and bury her dead Child. baby. And this is not just in Zambia. I've seen this happen in Kokonjeri. Even during COVID, during the COVID lockdown, we're being called by clients in Kokonjeri, in, in Buiku about St. Pastor Rezambo Kokonjeri, saying people are being detained here. Um, and it, it happens all over in Amdat. And I think it reflects just how much we do not prioritize healthcare and do not prioritize people in this country. I think it's also a failure of government policy uh, in terms of health governance because the Ministry of Health, and I'm glad he's here, has said, well, don't detain, but has not dealt with the underlying cause, right? The underlying cause is that public facilities are either not easily accessible or they're not in the state, they're not in the state that they need to be for the person who is able to go there to get there, right? Um, and if they're not accessible, for example, in, in, in Amdat, where there is no district hospital, the hospital there is uh, it's, uh, from the Uganda Catholic Medical Bureau, private, not-for-profit. Yeah. Government puts in some money, hoping that by doing so, you know, the hospital can cater the population yes. to a subsidized rate. The reality is the population get there and they are detained for, for not having paid medical bills. I know this, our last our report in 2018, for us, we are like forgotten mm -hmm. people, actually details some of these practices. And even in such situations, you still believe things like a court, um, you know, you're going to court to actually recover money would work. I mean, these are people who already can't afford. Exactly. In right? the first place. Yeah, and also I'm saying that there's, there's, there's a part of you can go to court and, and, yes. and, and recover. But there's also addressing the fact that government needs to get it right, and it's not doing so. We've been calling for them to actually invest in public health care. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you're investing and you're there for putting in the private, because as you're seeing, you're, getting, you're saying you have little money. You're putting it in private facilities, saying they will be able to reach the poor. They're detaining the poor who come there and unable to get bills. So where does the, where does the poor person fall in Uganda's health care system It's right a good now, thing you know? Emmanuel is here. <laughs> because then we're not, and you like, like, you like facts, which is a good thing. So I think we're still at that uh, one doctor to a thousand patients? It is. A thousand uh, Ugandans? It is improving. Uh, okay. Uh, but still uh, around Close the same to. figure. Yes. But uh, as a Ministry of Health, mm. uh, we are among many countries globally mm. that are striving to attain what we call universal health coverage. And universal health coverage is where the population has to access essential medical services mm -hmm. without going through financial hardships. And wh what do I mean by universal health uh, care? Uh, universal health coverage, it's a package. There must be health promotion, mm -hmm. there must be treatment, there must be rehabilitation and palliative care. Uh, and that's what uh, many countries, among which Uganda is in the sub-Saharan Africa, are striving and mo making steps towards achieving and we're striving to achieve universal it health coverage. Time. And the components include like a national health insurance mm -hmm. scheme. Yes. A national health insurance scheme, once in place, could shoulder people like the unfortunate circumstance of patients being detained at some of the private hospital. Mm. I, I know Alana is cringing to say something yes, now, uh, but, yeah, but, 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 oh, but, yes. but, but, but <laughs> yes. help, the, the, uh, help me understand um, mm. what are the, um, the, the, the cut, what is involved in that national health, com because I'm, I'm paying some bits and the government is paying some yes. bits of it, you understand, yes. but then they already can't afford Yeah, it. and, uh, and, and, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, let, me, let me first begin with this. Okay. Health services used to be for paying, government changed policy mm -hmm. and made them free. That was a step in the right direction. O to on ensure the ground, what is free? Yes. Uh, in well, what is actually free? Yes, I'm ground. saying essential health services. Essential. Live our own specialized services. Okay. And essential if you needed like a, a tumor operation, That's that is highly specialized. Yes. So, essential like Universal. accessing treatment to HIV AIDS, mm -hmm. okay. accessing uh, treatment for tuberculosis, mm -hmm. having malaria, malaria. treated, mm -hmm. those services are available. Even delivery in public hospi uh, hospitals. Should be when free, you go to Kawente, it's, it, it's free. It's free. And mm -hmm. also national general hospitals, health center force. Mm -hmm. However, we are not there yet where we want uh, the service to be. I'm going to, to have be. to stop you there, Emmanuel, yes. because, okay, if, if, say, we agree with you that it is free, as yes. you said, mm. maybe we need to now describe what is involved in free 
Mm. Because maybe free to government, when I get on ground, mm. free may not accord me what will go back to then say quality mm. health care. Because if a woman has gone in to deliver and it is free to mm. deliver a child, mm. but it, delivering a child isn't just to as literally push out a child. There might be other complications. There might be other things that the mother might need, that the child might need. Yes. Are you then saying that then becomes beyond essential? Because on the ground, I don't think oh, everything involved is actually free. Free should, I should pay nothing. That's what I'd understand free as. True, Emma. True, I should true, not pay a true, single coin. True. As a pregnant woman, I should walk true. in and not pay a single coin. Yes, uh, but if, I don't if we are ground, to separate uh, private health care yes. and public health care, that is what sh it's supposed, it's supposed to, be. to be. Because a, a PNFP private not for profit like like uh, Zambia is subsidized mm -hmm. we give some extra mm -hmm. funding such that they are able to also subsidize their care to then give not to give affordable. free services but give affordable affordable, yes. affordable care and I, I i really don't agree where, with where you detain a patient where is compassion in a circumstance where someone has lost a child so but when you are in a liberalized economy mm -hmm. where it is demand and supply. Yes. It becomes a challenge. So that's why is that one of the challenges? We are yeah. working mm -hmm. uh, on this uh, national health insurance scheme that is now at Parliament. Mm -hmm. We hope that it will be fast tracked by the legislature. Why do you think that will be the answer to? This? Yeah, because here you will have resources pulled as a country where everyone uh, contributes to one basket to shoulder those ones who cannot afford the poor, the indigents. So if we had this scheme in place, and I, 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 I appeal to the legislators to prioritize the bill, it was uh, passed and uh, tabled, uh, approved by cabinet and tabled before the Alana, House. you don't seem to think yeah. this will work. So I, w I want to start off by sort of centering this conversation because like I say to me, healthcare is a right, which mm. brings in all yes. the questions you're raising. Quality, access, mm. equity, and non-discrimination, particularly for the most vulnerable. And I think that needs to be the starting point. What concerns me about Uganda today is an increasing marketization of healthcare. I mean, he just, for example, talked about, uh, you know, we have facilities like in Zambia, PNFP government is putting in money. Now, is that the best use of its money, right? Because you're putting in money into a facility which is now detaining patients. Why don't we fix the public health system? Because, like you said, the people who cannot afford, at regardless, all. at all, and I have met them. I have met people who I don't even know how they sleep because when they show you the bed, it's the ground. Uh, when you when you go to some of these areas, there are also areas like the islands. There are no private facilities in the islands yeah. because it's not it's not it's not it's not going to get generate business, right? People are not going to be able to pay, and they are comp they, they, you find that they are completely left out and they have dilapidated facilities. So first of all, fix the public health system. The second question he's talking about is really around financing with national health insurance. Mm. And I think it has potential if you get it right. National health insurance cannot be a way to absolve government for its responsibility. Government, as the primary duty bearer, is supposed to make sure its citizens, particularly the most vulnerable, can get health care. So it has to put in money through progressive taxation, number one. Number two, when national health insurance does come in, the poor, it must be guaranteed that the indigents, the poor, will be covered by government. And right now in this bill, the ministry tabled, it doesn't have that language. Um, and it's something we've been, we've been engaging for a long mm. time in the ministry on this. And in fact, the 2014 bill used to have that language. It is now sort of there. And when things are not defined, again, who will fall through the cracks? Implementation crux, becomes harder. Right? Because I have health insurance, right? Uh, you know? And, and, and for so many, but we, we, do, we want to make sure we don't have a system where we replicate certain issues coming up. And the third thing is really around regulation. You can say Zambia should have compassion. We need to see something stronger. It can't be compassion. The government, and that's another part of the government's obligation, not only is it supposed to fulfill healthcare in terms of making sure its citizens have it, but when there, is, when there are other actors involved, you are supposed to regulate. Like monitor what you're talking about, whether mm. it's in a government facility or not, they're charging fees, for example, yes. in a government facilities. That comes, with an, that comes with because they're not monitoring. They're not really holding people accountable. Mm -hmm. Um, and when it, for, for the private facilities, it's an issue of regulation. We have piecemeal scattered legislation, right? And I think we need to, s to sort of center and say, okay, 
what is, you know, sometimes we get these, these ideas from other countries and so forth. We need to look and say what is the reality of Uganda right now. The reality is there is quite, a, and we're here last week talking about social protection, there's a huge percentage of people that are poor. COVID is going to make them slip further back That's actually poverty. what I was about to say, that uh, we, we might not understand that um, even before COVID, we probably never understood who the poor actually were. Because as much as you're saying that the services would be available to the poor or those who can't afford, you, you, we saw it in the distribution of food. Who you assumed didn't need the food actually probably did need the food, mm. you understand? But you didn't regard them as poor. Yeah. So doesn't it get harder in implementation when we actually, it's skewed on who is vulnerable and who isn't, Emma? Yeah, I, I think it's a matter of ensuring that we get our planning right. The strategy ensuring that uh, I've, I've, I've had an opportunity to visit the neighboring East African countries. Mm. They are able to profile each and every individual right from birth. And they have categories. I, and of I, wonder which, I wonder which neighboring country you're discussing. Uh, because <laughs> regardless. <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm saying. <laughs> they, okay. they have cla uh, uh, cat uh, classified mm. each individual. And it is easy. When you ask how many fall under this category, they will be able by a click of a button to check. So if we get to that level. But you we'll gonna, you're going to naturally, we, 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 we fail at implementation. We have the, 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 the mechanisms in place, and it's this discussion that would awaken the debate on having such issues right. I, I, I disagree. Yes. I, I actually think our policies try to do that. Um, and we've been involved, for example, in the context of developing national health insurance with the ministry was sitting and trying to think through how do you identify the poor, right? Mm. Ministry of Gender has its own criteria. UBOS has criteria because it does, you know, so there are a couple of institutions, the ministry as well. And unlike what he's saying, which Rwanda does do in terms of classification. Is that and the country we're discussing? I don't want... That is, <laughs> that is probably the country okay. we're saying our neighbors in East Africa. Has come from um, <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I do know that even during that, because I was asking about distribution of food, the issues of criteria were coming up and they're also telling me, yeah, we're just using the normal criteria, we have to do that. But I will say this, no criteria will be perfect, right? Mm. And it's, the, the critical thing is to really look at vulnerability because mm. you can be poor, but then, um, you know, someone, a person with a disability who is considered poor with many dependents, you know, it's, it's more a more complicated discussion, yes. right? But I, and that's why I think it's really important you invest in a strong public health system because the, p the poorest you, will naturally you, you keep get saying there. that though let's let's maybe help uh, the government understand when you say invest in what are those spheres they're yes. investing in and i first of all in terms of increasing overall budget which i see is now happening in covid but unfortunately supplementaries i'm trying to track that's not the tracking the health also. budget mm. this year has been a nightmare because i feel like you have the ministry of policy statement and then you begin getting into supplementary, mm -hmm. supplementary. That is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. It is not. It is not good it's for really accountability. But if we do see an increase in the health budget, which we've been pushing for for a long time, because it's often hovered between six to nine percent, that would be good. But then now getting down into the specifics, right? Like, are there health workers? And when you have limited, are you making sure that in all these areas, particularly the islands, you know, areas that are hard to reach, like Amdat, uh, services that would care about persons with disabilities are actually there? And I know sometimes we've talked a lot about it, but it's not really being done. And then when you get to what he's saying, specialized services. If I have cancer today, right? When we saw this during mm -hmm. lockdown, you're up, you can only come to UCI. So people missed cancer treatment because they were stuck up, up country. Because the whole process, I remember talking to someone at the start of this year, and she told me she takes an overnight bus with her son. Then she's at UCI the whole day. Then they take another overnight bus. And I could not imagine having, like, you know, you've gone through chemo and then, like, all of this, right? And it's mm -hmm. expensive and they miss treatment sometimes. And yet we see they're going to do the Luvoas. And by the way, in the budget, let's talk about the budget. In the budget, they are very clear that whatever happens, the construction of the Luvoa specialized, international specialized hospital is going to be it's going, yes. which is a lot of money. And when you think about the fact that there are so many districts without district hospitals, we, so many uh, sub-counties, and I do have the data here, without, you know, health center threes, for examples, and twos, you need to really think about if you're increasing access, you're not just bringing projects that look nice. You have the Mulago Specialized Women's Hospital. How many people can afford it, right? So we need to really think about building health infrastructure that is working for the worst off in society. That should be the starting point. So, Emma, we're talking about affordability for me, the patient. But have we missed, is, it, is, it, uh, is the issue or the problem on ministry side 
uh, like she said, budget. And it's not just budget, it's also political will, but... <laughs> <laughs> political will wouldn't be Emma. There's, there's, yeah, there's, yeah. there's <laughs> both political will, okay. because uh, we are working towards ensuring that prime we get primary health care right. Mm. That is entails disease prevention. People do not have to go to the hospital, because health uh, is at home. You must begin by getting people avoiding to get the health facility. As far as infrastructure, we have a, a, a plan of constructing a health center three per sub county. But the Which ones that exist already, already, yes, already, are they well equipped? They are on. No. Oh yes, there is a process. Already now we have done about one hundred and fifty that are being equipped in every sub county. But it's not a case let of. Let it's not a case of build more. No. It's a let me no, share because what's already there are health center tools. Here. Health center tools uh -huh. that are being upgraded to health center so threes, threes. Uh -huh. per sub county, and it should be able to have uh, like delivery services and all the other essential services, and this is happening. But Emma, let me give it you a real anecdote. Really yeah, let me give you a real anecdote. Then I was in Sigulu Islands, yes. uh, where there was Rabachi Health Center too, that was infested by bats. I documented it. I came back. I mean, I was disgusted to the core. The health, uh, the, the health workers were giving drugs outside the facility because they could they not take the smell. facility. Even me researching, it was overwhelming. I came back a year later to launch the report. Uh, we had the MP, we had the Opportunities Commission. I mean, the ministry knew about it. Again, it was the same situation. We filed a complaint at the Corporate News Commission against the ministry, specifically on Sigulu Islands and the issues of discrimination there. It is years later, it is now recently that I was checking in and they're saying, well, the health facility has been fixed. For the now, I mean, you, I want us to, to get, get to the okay. We have a deliberate serious. process. Emma, let's say, bats, let's say bats are a and, higher and Emma, position. Yeah, what about the access? Uh, some, something yes. as small as medication. They just, you know, medicine yes. not being available in this health center. There something as, there so let's say bats. She yeah, might there say bats. has been uh, an improvement in availability of That's essential true. medicines. Okay. Even to an extent that true. she has talked about cancer. Mm. The Cancer Institute is a center of excellence in the region. And we get patients out. from as far as DRC, Ethiopia, Somalia, neighboring Rwanda, uh, and, and we are also doing, because and, we, and, and and we have, good, good for our yes, so we have become a center of excellence, <laughs> and now we are talking about decentralizing this specialized care. Okay, the I got, same I as got for the cancer we, we can, the applaud, same we can as applaud one thing. Yeah, the same as... But, uh, but we're saying access, and access has to be for the majority yes, of the population. Yes, and that's why we're saying we are seeing a trend of non-communicable diseases mm -hmm. uh, on the rise. We have promoted physical activity, which is on the side of uh, uh, mm -hmm. best li uh, having uh, uh, right lifestyles, and also moving towards uh, decentralizing the services. And we are targeting to the one who cannot ap afford to get on a bus and come to Kampala. You, so you know, at the we are going somewhere to in the middle of, the, I don't know, I think the second lockdown, there was a question where they said, can Uganda actually af afford to have this pandemic? If uh, things went pandemic. wrong, we'll can we? And the answer was no. Because if <laughs> ordinary <laughs> malaria, you understand, if, if giving birth, as you, say, you go yeah. to a health center. I'm, I'm saying, let's say th the smallest thing is just accessing, I am sick, I've been diagnosed, tablets are here. That's yes. not possible. No, it's available. And I, I, I do this In th every health center? It might not be in every health center. But because why not? Because uh, then th if we're, we're building it is a whole It is a whole process. I have covered the health sector where well, still a journalist, mm -hmm. and I know where there are challenges. Mm. For instance, there can be a process of requisition or of re requesting for medicines. If myself, a, a, a lab, a, a pharmacist, mm. a health center, why, like what she was talking about, I do not submit my request on time. And the patients come and there is no medicine. It is an individual responsibility. There is even one the time I went to Bududa, uh, Bududa Hospital. I realized that medicines were in the pharmacy, but the, the, the midwife who was at the, 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 the ward mm -hmm. was saying we do not have these specific drugs. Mm. So that they, they, they are some things we have to fix, like coordination, 
yes. and also the health system, such that mm. every time uh, we, we are able to view that this kind of health facility has not been supplied with mm. a specific drug. And all that is happening. So, uh, it, which is the bigger problem? Because if coordination could fix a lot of things. Yes. There are, there are just uh, a few things that we need to get right. The medicines are there. When you go to the national medical stores now, or each and every drug for most of the diseases suffered, uh, or which we, we diagnose in Uganda, are there. So it is a matter of having the right human resource that are able to utilize the system to have efficient and quality services. Alana, you were saying? Yeah, I think, you know, Emma side of this conversation by saying universal health care is making sure everyone can be able to get access, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And I think that has to be the starting point of, of all your deliberation. So you can talk about coordination, and I wish Ministry of Finance was here, I wish as Parliament, because I also do think it's also skewed priority making. As the Ministry here talking about getting into a medical credit fund, uh, you know, you're discussing, which is going to now support the private sector in some way, and Ministry of Finance trying to get money. And our public health system, our baby, is struggling, you know. So I think we need to really be like, okay, if we are feeling constrained, where do we start? Where do we get the most bug for your back, you know? And you're going to find that it is, again, fixing this issue in the public health system. Actually financing it, doing the supervision and monitoring, and then regulating all these providers. Because the discussion that hasn't even happened here is... Yes, we're saying this even about the public health system. And then you go to private and the costs are astronomical. You go there for one thing and it's like t tests are tacked on, you know. You're not sure if you have qualified healthcare personnel looking, at, looking after you. Uh, because sometimes, I remember in one case, someone lost a baby. When we began poking, it turns out the midwives were not even qualified and they were here handling babies. And, and which is where regulation, which right, you keep Right, exactly. Fixing and so I'm coming. saying that the two conversations have to move hand in hand. You have to fix the public health system and really invest in it, but you also have to be regulating who else is in the healthcare space. And you have to prioritize because you can't, you can't be everywhere. I, don't, I still struggle to understand government's policy of getting money, giving it to the private sector. When its baby here is struggling, which most Ugandans will turn to, and at the same time, you find the private sector is doing things like detaining patients and a whole host of practices. Um, so I think we need to really think about it from an equity perspective. It, it, obviously, the budget, does, the budget is not enough, has never been enough. <laughs> and it will never, it be, will never be, be enough. enough. But of course, the, the government is deliberately creating the prerequisites. But you see... If you have good road infrastructure... I can say, mm. that can link all the health facilities. The health center trees we are talking about per sub-county. And there are no deliberate delays. Because at times a mother can delay to reach the health facility, not because there is lack of an ambulance. You, you see, because either the road Emma, has the broken same, down. The, the same thing they will tell yes. you that as a farmer, I have my goods, but it takes me X amount of time to get to Aha. the market. So and they'll complain about the that. The prerequisites but are in happening. Health, <laughs> yes. Infrastructure, <laughs> inf infrastructure <laughs> is die. happening. They die. I was at uh, Kayunga, Kayunga Hospital. It has just been refurbished. It's going to be equipped with the state of the art equipment. So. If you go to Kayunga and have the right human resource, mm -hmm. people of Kayunga will get the best services they will need. Okay, outside how about emergency even. services? They yes, yeah. because it has factored in emergency services. We have also in, an emergency policy but you see, where we are going mm -hmm. to have a dispatch, a, a ambulance dispatch center that are pressed regionally. Mm -hmm. Already uh, this COVID situation has at least... It's going not to leave the healthcare system the same it again. It has actually so poked, yeah, uh, poked the health sector as, a lot much more. Much as it has <laughs> poked, yes. there is investment. If we talk of 10, so wait, just 10 to if we, ta we talk of 10 uh, ICU beds per regional hospital, this has not been there. But, but they are going to be is there. Is it just so me so 10 sound so little? You, you better wear your mask, it's people, it's because so if we only have 10 no, it's per so region, little, our population but is also it's, it's uh, That's growing. what I'm saying. Yeah. The, be, beyond COVID, people get accidents and they need sometimes yes, these services. Yes. And this, this uh, unfortunate situation of COVID has at least brought an investment. Why should we wait for a well, pandemic to remind us to be responsible? And that's what I'm saying. We need to deliberately invest mm. 
mm. in the system. But now, we, so what even, was, what even you the, see, why weren't we doing When this? you see now, the, 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 the airspace has been closed. Ugandans are here. So that's why we need mm. to prioritize ensuring that we do not go abroad. Because sometimes I can say people might be going for causes that can be diagnosed and treated of, of here. Course. Listen, so it begins okay, with let, Emma, me let's and be you. Honest. Emma, me let's and be you, honest. Fravia. Mm. If Fravia <laughs> can walk into Malago, I can say women's hospital. Yes. And you have your baby there. You who at least earn some money. But how much you then that one, you are investing also in the health care. Yeah, but Emma, but I can't, I, Emma, I can't be, be the one investing. No, I'm saying, the, yes. I'm saying that's why, I, that's when even the policy makers, when we are taking pride yes. in our facilities, you're going and having your baby at the women's hospital. That one will leave you appreciating the quality of care that is there. But we're but but you there is no <laughs> no, if you thrive here, yes. you would say at any one time, mm. I would go to private. And unfortunately, you get detained. Mm. Sometimes you find patients asking for now a transfer back to Mrago. And my appeal yes. is that why don't you start with Mrago? Start Mrago. with Mrago, making it your thank, first th point th of thank you. Yes, but you Actually, need to have Mrago. 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 Thank you, Emma, Mrago for even saying that. Six. No, what? Yes. Let me, let's be clear. No, no, Emma no, no, talks no, no, about no, no. many Emma. things, and I want to respond. <laughs> Cancer Institute, he said it's a center of excellence. Oh, center of excellence I for spend everyone. quite a bit of time there. If you look at what you get in the public portion of... First of all, there's this very problematic trend of the private department within a public facility, yes. which causes differential treatment, which means that you're still you know, giving better treatment to those who are able to pay. Which is ish you're really undermining your systems in in, in those instances. But, 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 but when but you go to places like Cancer Institute, Alana, people spend day like they literally. Alana, spend. let's let's say there's somebody watching who's saying, "Thank God I can afford healthcare. Thank God I can walk in with my pregnant wife mm. into a hospital that I mm. can afford in in all its glory and privilege and luxury, and they have a child. We don't want to say it's wrong for them. They, they, they can afford it. Why not? Great." Well, we, s we know that the majority of Ugandans cannot afford it. I don't want you to tell me that because at some point I'll be stuck and be told to go back to Mulago, that why didn't I start with Mulago in the first place? That's what we're discussing here. As much as we're discussing affordability, there's also quality. We, we're not opting for you or for Mulago because of the many issues. You cannot tell me that my, return, my starting with Mulago and investing in it that I'm, government should be the first yes, person to Yes, government invest in has it. invested. Then I should be the and, and what I am doing here now is mm. telling people these services, Exist. you leave them they and are. you run into private services. But, but uh, you private know what happens? Care. You have problematic so, policies. For example, so you have the best if, doctors if in Mulago. If you begin with but Mulago, they are elsewhere. you get the best service. Okay, so the, uh, so like my you appeal, said, the best doctors appeal, in Mulago. My appeal, are, my yes, appeal, they are. But they are moonlighting elsewhere. They're not going to tell you to go. My appeal is you that allow them to be let private the, the and general public. population begin with the public health facility. You will, you will, uh, you will not but be in unfortunate circumstances of being detained. And still, you'll get the same perfect service. You no, would get in, no, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, a private facility. Emma, you're trying to tell really me I get hard, the, it's I really get the same Emma, service? No, you know, it's, hard, yes. it's hard doing Emma's job you because, because he has to because come you're here and defend him. No, same because you have not given it an opportunity. Myself, so. I walk to, I go to Chirudu when for, no for medical attention. Okay. Yeah. And I get the same uh, quick diagnosis. I have my, my, if I have, uh, for instance, let's say a skin challenge, it is fixed. Mm. So I am appealing to everyone who is out there, mm. make a public facility your first point of, of reference. Course. Let it be a referral. If I am, for instance, referred from Chirudu and say this service, for instance, a specialized imaging. Mm -hmm. Now uh, hospitals like Chirudu has CT, they have MRI, mm. people, that's why I'm saying people get to visit and appreciate the investment government uh, has but can made. I, can I just respond yes. to Emma? Because I do, I, I do agree with Emma in that the public system can deliver. And we've seen it during COVID. We've seen yes. in Tebe. I yes. mean, if I got COVID right now, I am taking my chances with the public system, Absolutely, right? Yes. Um, and th what is the difference? The difference is now there is political will, there is funding, there is coordination, there is inspection. These are things that continuously fall through the cracks because you're right. 
Mulago will have the best doctor. In fact, the best doctors are, go are government Mulago. doctors. Mm. Everyone knows that. But what, what happens? You have policies that allow them to be working there, also working in private, and then they abscond work to go follow where to make their extra Which money. Which is where I think Emma you should know, answer the so answer. So we need to stop regulation. this back and forth. Is there forth. regulation? Is there a bottleneck in the regulation Regulation process? is there, but we can strengthen it It can further. improve. It can Meeting. improve. For instance, the permanent secretary has been doing support supervision. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Diana Twin has been in Western Uganda, and she she visited one specific health facility where she found one doctor who moved and settled there because most people apply and even reporting is an issue even for COVID we made uh, 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 people to go and work mm. and they don't show up so this uh, uh, this specific doctor had improved delivery and attracted the number of mothers and she was so happy to find that these things are happening. Down in a health center three. But you're not addressing mm. my issue with uh, yeah, the regulation. So of the S private support, sector. Support supervision. Mm. Support, I, I am That's first different. concentrating and on And I'm hoping on Dr. Twin is showing up once in a while. Should not yes, so this is a continuous okay. process. Support supervision. <laughs> it is, it is it planned <laughs> to know whether attendance to duty, for instance, mm. Availability of treatment mm -hmm. is there. Yes. And this is a deliberate process. If we have su uh, support supervision happening regularly, and this can ha fall between public and private, we have also the private supervised. Yes, which because is actually where I learned this. We, we, for instance, mm -hmm. we normally and do the annual things. sector performance report. Mm. I don't know whether she has had an uh, opportunity to look at it. <laughs> <I hope. laughs> this report also entails, like, for instance, how many caesarean sections were performed at Nakasero vis-a-vis mm. -vis the regional referral hospitals. Mm -hmm. And we are also... Uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm saying uh, part of that b uh, uh, brings the debate. And we are not f uh, noticing that some private facilities, for instance, are performing more caesarean mm, sections which is not right yes and that mm. was a business it's business yes so mm. now it is bringing the debate of we need to have a, a revision and, on, and, in, on and in regulation of the private hospitals the where where does um where do your powers start and end because somebody watching mm -hmm. is saying that if you regulate and you're able to to protect the ugandan in the regulation where does that protection start and end because if, if things like detaining people are to do with yeah, money we have and created affordability. Uh, there is a, a patient's uh, charter mm -hmm. and the health worker's charter. It clearly spells out the rights of every patient mm -hmm. in private and in, in public. public. I would like yes, to interest you to look at mm -hmm. the sections of the patient's charter and their rights. And it clearly spells out all the circumstances. But sometimes... Lack of information denies people's uh, people Let, their Let's talk rights. about that particular scenario of when I am, I'm, I've been detained by a hospital yes. because of not paying the funds. And in the yeah, situation like that, will not be able to afford it at yeah. any point. Even if there was, I don't know what, even if it let me go for two interventions, I can't bring back the money. What then happens in such a situation? If, you, if the minister was, okay, whatever body was to intervene, what would then be? They would, they would say the bill is... First of all, how would they get to know? And that's what I'm trying to say to you. I want to give you a concrete example. This lady had to, to, for her to escape the facility, she had to climb a tree, swing down with a baby in the back. It was, I, like when I heard the story, I said, what? And I was getting to know. By the time the ministry gets to know, right, uh, you, you have to have, it's, so not enough, it's not enough to just come and slap the wrist after. You have to anticipate these scenarios. You have to anticipate that people are going to do all kinds of scrupulous things to make profit and to put regulation, first of all, to stop them and then to then enforce it. Now, the issue with putting regulation uh, at the forefront has been a thing where the ministry has actually been weak on it. We have a PPP Act, which is uh, PPP in health policy, which contradicts our Public-Private Partnership Act that the Ministry of Finance has, which allows you to give money, government money, to these in these PHC grants, yet our PPP Act says the private sector should be the one carrying the financial mm -hmm. risk. We have, uh, I mean, what else do you have? The Uganda Medical Dental Practitioners Council, but that only regulates the healthcare workers and the particular practice. ones, mm, particular yes, ones. Yes. So you still don't have a There thing. are various councils no, that but handle every kind yeah, of the healthcare. Yeah, but they're all piecemeal. And see. that is regulation. 
If a doctor, for instance, uh, is negligent, there is a mechanism. Uh -huh. Now here, when so you regulation is there, it's just in different so when you categories. Get categories. Yes. So when you detain the patient the now, only as now, a now need question, is now the what financing. Do you use? Sure, but uh -huh. because of a liberalized economy yes. where hospitals based on demand can charge the, 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 but the affairs. That be and, and the only, uh, only thing they need people. to do is to sensitize people. Uh, there are unfortunate circumstances where someone has come with an emergency. Mm -hmm. So we need to look for mechanisms, how we can avert. I mean, hospitals, you can't say unfortunate because I emergencies will happen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. It's, it's anticipated. And deliberately, we are but creating an emergency. the ministry perspective, that emergencies will mm -hmm. happen. We how have an emergency it? department that just, uh, that is implementing right in the stage of implementation. After it has been fully implemented, we hope that no mother will be, for, uh, will be going to a facility where they would not have wished to go. Because no. once there is a dispatch of Evil. an ambulance, Evil. Evil. It, Let's sometimes be you're pushed. Let's be realistic. This is the nearest, that's where you will go. But if there was an ambulance system that is currently being put in place, someone will be able to be rushed to. Go to no, but that's why if a mother, if, if the if baby is coming the right now and something is wrong, or if you've had appendicitis, yeah, and you know how and picking switches. Care, they, emergency they, they, care is the right for particular mobile, issues. Mobile health facilities. There are ambulances you know, that are mobile health mm, facilities. Where you can, be where you can be even, stabilized. you can have your baby mm. be stabilized then up to more. where you, you, you the, the hospital where you've been attending mm. antenatal. And that's how it should be. No, but you should, but not, you should Emma, not be going to deliver at a facility that you've not been going to but for antenatal. Emma, in the event that you go there, Emergency. and that's what I want to be clear, they are supposed <coughs> to actually treat you first, and then you, the issue with regulation comes in with, okay, they want to recover money, right, if it's a private facility. You know, they can't detain you, and the ministry needs to be, it can't just say, you need to be, clear be compassionate yeah. or whatever, no. We need to have as a whole regulation recognizing that there are certain private actors that are in this space. You need to be very strict about the regulation because, like I said, if you don't do that, you begin to reduce and healthcare I, I to a market saying, uh, market good. If you, good, look, if you, you know? look at the patient's uh, charter, I'm glad you bring up right, the charter. The patient's oh, charter. Okay. Um, it clearly spells yes. out all those circumstances. It doesn't I, 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 I like that, that, out those I like that this will not be the end of this conversation. Yes. So <laughs> uh, time, time is not on our side. We have Alana yes. Kembabazi, the program manager at ISA, and Emmanuel Ineviona from the Ministry of Health PRO. Uh, when I read that, you two can come back and have that <laughs> conversation again. <laughs> Yes, because, uh, as you said, as a journalist, you like it's facts. It's an important so we discussion can come back, we can that come we need to have. We need to uh, continue having sure yeah, yeah, that, that should also ensure that we also focus at having no medical tourism no. or losing yes. money to persons traveling abroad for care. W we're not going to go abroad. Let yes. me read so this. Let's <laughs> my, my appeal to everyone who yes. is watching us this but morning. But you put up Lugoa for medical to tourism. To prioritize yeah. having health care within our country. It's also a patriotic call. Patriotic with quality also. Yes. Let's, let's, yeah. And we have... Let's not support have, Uganda just for the sake have of the supporting. specialists who can perform that kind of service. Absolutely. Quality service. And can I just... You can maybe have here. Just You're to say my short, last... Yes, I'm <laughs> yes, parting short. Again, we must remember that there's a reason why we have governments in place. And we do have these things called human rights, and healthcare is one of them. Mm. And that means that you're investing, first of all, making sure you're going to get healthcare by investing in the public health system, but also regulating any other actor Actors in, this, in this, space this space. Because it's not going to be business as usual, and we must be wary about the marketization we're seeing of healthcare. Thank you so much. It's morning at NTV. Our hashtag does continue.